Well, it is good to be here. We're, we're blessed to be here with y'all. We always love being in Connect class. It's a wonderful class. And so, uh, hey amen. We love you guys. And we're just, like Brother Jason said, expecting great things. Um, but I would like to extend a, a heartfelt thank you to anyone from the Tier Rehabilitation Center uh, that may be watching this video. Um, you've been so good to me, to my wife. You guys are great at what you do. I know it's your jobs, but you're awesome at your work. And so we, we want to thank you. We're praying that everyone that comes your way is blessed and touched and healed, but we also want you to be blessed as well. So thank you for what you do. Amen. I wanted to get that out of the way first. I've been been able to meet some great people over in Houston the past several weeks. But um, to begin this morning, a confession needs to be made. I will not be teaching on wisdom this morning. <laughs> If that were our subject, I believe I would have deferred to Shane or something. That would let him teach wisdom. It's a, a little bit high for me. Uh, I mean, how do you even how do you even crack the subject of wisdom? You know, how how qualified would someone have to be to be able to teach the topic of wisdom? You know, maybe we could call up King Solomon, who had what the Bible called measureless wisdom, to come and teach us. But unfortunately, he passed. <laughs> So here we are. But for, for today, let's, let's settle for something a bit easier to manage. So how about the pursuit of wisdom instead? Why don't we do that? To me, this is a much more agreeable topic to try to cover. Uh, to borrow the words of the Apostle Paul, I have yet to attain it, but I find myself striving for it. You know, I think that's that's the goal of every Christian. You know, we haven't attained yet, but, but I am pursuing it. <clears throat> Wisdom is an attribute that when you talk about its worth, you can look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 15, and it beautifully says, She is more precious than rubies. And all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. So anything we can desire in this life is not to be compared to wisdom. Prestige, happiness, love, even the Mega Millions lottery. I know y'all thought about it too. That sounds big and bold out there on the highway. There's a lot, there's a lot of hundreds attached to that. But it says wisdom is greater than all of these things. And Solomon knew this to be true. He learned it years before. If you look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 13, and I'm going to paraphrase it for time's sake, but God visited Solomon, and he was willing to grant him whatever he asked. He, he, he gave a proposition to Solomon. He said, what is it that you want, and I will give it. And because Solomon chose wisdom above all else, he gained wisdom. But beyond that, he gained everything that he didn't ask for. Because he asked for wisdom, God also gave him riches, peace, freedom from any enemy oppression. He, he got it all because he desired wisdom above all things. And so it is only through wisdom that we gain any and everything of worth. In my opinion, the seeking and gathering of this precious commodity is just as valuable as wisdom itself. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, we must be effective and purposeful to seek out that true wisdom that Jehovah himself used to establish the heavens and found the earth. So uh, I'm gonna, gonna try my best to avoid saying wisdom too many times today. <laughs> but it seems like we need wisdom to seek out wisdom. <laughs> Don't anybody count, okay? <laughs> so I feel like the first and more, most important bridge we need to cross in our search for wisdom is finding out what it is. Anyone want to take a crack at giving a definition to wisdom? Or maybe you, you have something in mind that 
you called it, this is my definition of wisdom. It's kind of how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I asked my daughter, I said, how would you define wisdom? And she just kind of stared at me. I was like, good. Because I feel like that's where we all are. It's hard. It's hard to define what it is. <clears throat> uh, my dictionary app on my phone, it says it's the quality do you have some wisdom you'd like to share? <laughs> you know what it's not. That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do. Uh, Sister Stone, come finish my lesson. <laughs> so my dictionary app says the quality or state of being wise or a wise saying. In 1 Kings 3.12 when God said he gave Solomon a wise and understanding heart, that word wise is translated from a Hebrew word, wait for it, hacham. I've been practicing that. <laughs> and that word hacham means skillful, wise, learned, or prudent. And so it's, it's hard to find a definition that's not circular. Right. It's hard to find a definition of wisdom that doesn't include the word wisdom. Right. And so I, I, look, I looked a little deeper. I wasn't quite satisfied with this definition. And I found that wisdom is knowledge of what is true or right coupled with judgment as to action. Mm -hmm. Essentially, wisdom is knowledge and understanding that's acted upon. It's, it's, it's not wisdom until you act upon it. Right. I can know all things, but until I do something with that knowledge, it's not wisdom. That's good. I remember years ago in this class, Brother Shane Haygood, he said, knowledge is knowing that your truck is broken. Wisdom is knowing how to fix it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. That might be a little sour leg, but that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but I liked it. Yeah. I liked it. And we see this example, we see this action exampled by God in Proverbs 3.19, where it says, The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding he hath established the heavens. And so the wisdom and the understanding was defined by his action that he took upon them. When you look at James, the brother of our Lord Jesus, he gives insight as to the, the qualities of what wisdom is. So James 3, 3 through 17, it says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, or fruits. Mm -hmm. By deeds done in humility, that comes from wisdom. So that's a, that's a fine clue right there. Wisdom is identified by the good fruit of someone's life and the attitude of humility. Verse 14 says, But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or not deny the truth. Such, in quotations, wisdom, such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. So, Sister Stone, James first tells us what wisdom doesn't look like, right? right? <laughs> he said it, 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 it doesn't look like bitterness, envy, or selfishness. So in other words, wisdom doesn't come from anyone seeking to promote themselves right. over the knowledge they purpose to impart. And that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an important thing to look for. Mm -hmm. Is this person trying to teach me something more, uh, more concerned about how they look in their delivery than what they're actually trying to deliver. In, in this social media age, in this video age, we see so much people imparting things. We have to say, okay, what is the desire? What's the motive behind their delivery? Right. So that's what it doesn't look like. Here's what it does. Verse 17 says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. 
So there is a fraudulent wisdom. Mm -hmm. It has fruits of selfish ambition, envy, and pride. But on the other hand, we have this heavenly wisdom. Mm -hmm. And it's signified by humility, mm -hmm. purity, peace, love, mercy, sincerity. Mm -hmm. And it's seen from God's <laughs> point of view. So those are the things we need to look for and be able to determine what is and what isn't. James also includes an important clue that's easily overlooked. He, he shared what wisdom looks like, but he also told us where we could find it. So if you look at verse 17, it says, Wisdom comes from above or from God himself. And so... I recently read this article um, it was by our uh, general secretary for the UPCI, um, Reverend Scott Graham, and he painted this picture of what wisdom, true wisdom, really looked like, and um, he used a corn maze of all places to explain what wisdom looked like. Uh, show of hands, has anybody ever attempted a corn maze? Oh, wow. I, I never have. So you guys will really be able to relate to this. So the corn in a corn maze is like, could be seven to 10 feet tall. Right. Like they wait for it to get mature before they, you know, <coughs> open it up for people to try to make it through. So that adds to the degree of difficulty. And so because of its height, right? And then other factors, it's incredibly difficult to decide which way to go, right? right? Backtracking is essentially impossible because every turn looks the same. Right. Now, corn is not uh, the most diverse of God's creations, but, it, it, you know, it, it's meant to be difficult, right? Mm -hmm. So in this article, Brother Scott Graham, he, he talked about the corn maze, and then he talked about this teen who completed a corn maze in record time. And how did he do it? The little cheater used a video drone. <laughs> <laughs> So he, he's, he's navigating this corn maze, record time, but he has a drone hovering above with a bird's eye view of, of what he needs to do, where he needs to go. So never was he troubled when he came to an intersection. Never did he struggle with even having to backtrack. He was able to zip right through. Why? Because he had a picture from above of the whole thing, what it looked like and where he needed to go. So even though he cheated, and like I'm a stickler for rules, I do not like a cheater. But even, even though he cheated, he gave us this powerful illustration what God's wisdom looks like. And, and to borrow the words from the prophet Isaiah, he is high and lifted up, which gives him a very unique viewpoint. This thought process, it caused a portion of scripture to jump out to me. Um, and it's Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. It says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways. And what? Be wise. Consider the ant and her ways and be wise. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provides her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Solomon wrote, if it's wisdom that you seek, look at the ant. They are very proficient in what they're doing. They gather everything that is necessary to have a, a long, sustained life. Uh, nobody has to tell them what they do. They don't jockey for position. <laughs> the ants are a good example mm -hmm. of what we need to be wise they thrive no matter how many times I've tried to poison them. <laughs> like, I kill this group and this one pops out. I mean, there is no end to the ant. They're very resilient. And uh, Solomon says we can grab some wisdom from the ant. But what, what grabbed my attention from this scripture is not necessarily the ant and how wise they are. They deserve all the credit for what they do. But what grabbed me is he told me, Get above something and look down on it, and you will gain wisdom. That's and so it's good. like in a small, fractioned way, I get to view something like God does mm -hmm. from this high and lifted up point of view. And I can see 
where they're going. I, I know where an ant's going. I can tell if it's going to get where it needs to go. I can determine, hey, this, this ant bed is in a good place. I can also determine whether or not somebody's going to show up with a bag of spectricide <laughs> and get rid of the buggers. Right. And so it's like just a sliver of being able to see things like God sees things and have a, a certain amount of wisdom because of where I am seated, right. which is above, looking down. So obviously God's view is much more in-depth and vast than, than mine is, but we get the idea, right? right. Uh, another dimension of the Lord's wisdom is the fact that not only does not only does he see things from high and from being high and lifted up not only does he know what has happened he knows what will happen right. before it does and i bet we all wish we had that skill right. <laughs> we'd love that isaiah 46 9 through 10 for i am god and there is none else i am god and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning mm -hmm. and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure again he doesn't just know what we have experienced so far he has knowledge of every choice we have yet to make mm -hmm. he, he knows each and every event that we're going to encounter from now until eternity future and so there is an argument that if this be true, we have no choice or control over ourselves. But consider this, and I've discussed this a couple of times in this class, uh, but it is a common question. If God knows everything I'm going to do, then I have no choice in the matter, right? We've heard that. But there are a few books that I've read more than once. Um, they're funny, they're exciting, they're clever, and I really enjoy them. I enjoy them enough to read it again, right? right? You know, the bad guys fail tremendously, and the good guys win and ride off into the sunset and get the girl, and it's just really fun. <laughs> and so, because it's good, I want to read it again. But because I already read the story, uh, I know what decisions will be made by the characters. And I know, I know what the outcomes are to those decisions, right. Right? right? But just because I know what they're going to do and how what they do is going to affect them doesn't mean I have any influence over their choice. Right. They can still do what they want to do, right? right? Yes. From what I gather of Scripture, the Lord sees us from his heavenly throne, knows the end from the beginning, but just because he has read the book, doesn't mean he controls the characters right. we absolutely have free will and power of choice yeah. he just happens to know how the story ends right right he's already seen it <clears throat> but that doesn't mean he controls us <clears throat> we absolutely have free will and the power of choice he just knows how the story ends. we get to so we get to participate in this ability as well knowing the end from the beginning again on a small scale right. wisdom is often found in people who have surpassed us in years mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we, we look to people who have gone before us for their wisdom in the book of ecclesiastes again i'm finding that to be a positive book um solomon he often expresses something and you'll probably catch it as soon as I say it. He often says there is nothing new under the, under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. And so what that means is our individual experiences are strikingly similar. Right. You know, a lot of the things that I experience in my life, to some degree, you're going to experience them too. While they may not be exact, they're easily comparable, right? Right. And so... Um, that brings up the thought, you know, why, why is it easy for parents to share wisdom with their, I'm asking you guys, why is it easy for a parent to share wisdom with their child? We've already been there and done that. 
That's right. Got the <laughs> yeah. Right. And the regret. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to go back. <laughs> exactly. We, 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 we know the outcome. It's not because we're super smart. Right. It's because I fell down that hill before. Right. Let's talk about this. Yeah. And so in turn, that becomes wisdom. Right. 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 So we all, we all have those people in our lives who have... They've seen the end from the beginning, and be they can be great re resources for wisdom. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now I have Sister Mary Ellen Hughes. You know, she is constantly just writing us letters and giving us books. If Sister Mary Ellen Hughes gives me a book, I'm going to read that book right. because she is a a fine example of what a godly woman is to be, right. and by you know by extension, what a godly man should be, because we know how wonderful her husband was, right. and shows because of her position mm -hmm. and her experience, she is able to impart some things into people coming up behind her. I, you know, as recently as yesterday, we, uh, as recently as yesterday, we got to sit down with our daughter, Mia. She's really close to turning 16 years old. Um, our son was spending the night with a cousin. So we, we had this time, this kind of breakfast table talk, right? And it was improvised. I didn't, hadn't planned it or anything. But we were able to sit down with her and I told her, I was like, Mia, you're going to have some new doors opening very soon. When you start driving, you're going to have some new experiences that, that you've never encountered before. And so um, I want to tell you some things to look out for. And I, 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 we begin to just talk about some things she should be cautious about, ways she should handle herself, you know, things she should say and not say, and just begin to impart things. I mean, we even talked about marriage. <laughs> but it, you know it we've been through some things and we've we've had some victories and we've had some defeats and sure we need to pass that on to those coming up behind us and so the opportunities are, are there for us to impart our wisdom to mm -hmm. someone else mm -hmm. but also for us to receive for someone who's gone before us right. and so in, in in a very small scale We've seen the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so we can kind of experience something that God understands. Mm -hmm. He doesn't give it all to us right. as much as we'd like. We probably wouldn't like it if we knew the end from the beginning. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but we see his view from top down from time to time, but also from the expanse of time. Mm -hmm. And it's a very unique view and powerful view. And the Bible says that's where wisdom comes from. And this is the wisdom we're after. It comes from above. It already knows the end of the story. And it has more value than any other earthly material. So the, I guess the million dollar question here today is, how do I get it? I want some of that. I need some of that. Right. If we're going to be successful, we need to grab all the wisdom that we can get. But our God is so generous that he's not willing to withhold anything that is good from his children. His instruction for gathering wisdom is simple. Right. You find it in James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask, ask of God. That giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So what we are told is that if we desire the most profitable virtue to ever exist on the earth we just need to ask it's that simple right and we tend to overcomplicate things we really do the lord the lord often makes what is most valuable the easiest to attain you know when we think of salvation my goodness an eternity in heaven and you know escaping from an eternity of punishment like i really really hope i can grab a hold of that he doesn't make it hard for us to attain that. Right. He said, it's by my grace and through your faith right. that salvation is made available to you, not by any of your works, but because of my sacrifice, I am giving it to you. Right. Right. He doesn't make it hard. And the same can be said about wisdom. We just simply need to ask him right. for this gift. God instructs in Proverbs 3 and 6. It says, acknowledge him or ask his advice 
in all our ways and he shall direct our paths. You know the scripture. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Right. Ask his advice in everything that you do and he's willing to direct us. Again, this scripture can be twisted into something that it's, it's not. It, the scripture is not pointing to a dicta dictatorship. Right. It doesn't point to a God that says, you better get my permission before you do something. That's not what it's saying at all. What it's pointing to is a relationship that God Almighty desires to have with us. Right. Hey, before you make this choice, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Because I've got, some, I've got some good advice I could give you. I've got some wisdom mm -hmm. that I could give to you if you're just willing to, to just hang on a minute and talk to me about it. Mm -hmm. To refer back to the corn maze, right? When we come to that intersection, we see corn on the left, corn on the right, <laughs> corn in front and corn behind. Instead of just saying, man, I'm going to go this way. Let's, let's pull out the, the video drone and say, okay, what's the right way to go? Right? right? Let's, let's seek him before we just go. And we know that scripture. I mean, like, we could probably all quote that one, right? Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. We all know it. But how often do we take the time to say, I'm about to make a choice right now. Have I talked to the Lord about this choice? It's not an accusation, because I need to work on it myself, I promise you. But, it, but it's a powerful tool that we have access to that we need to make sure that we're utilizing, right? So we need to talk with the Lord, but... I have found there is a caveat to this. When we ask for wisdom from the Lord, we need to be okay with the medium he uh, chooses to deliver it with. That's good. You know, sometimes God chooses to use USPS when we were hoping for FedEx. <laughs> Can I get an amen? How many of your spirits just drop when you see your package being delivered by USPS? <laughs> you might as well get in your car now and just drive down there. I'm sorry if anybody worked for USPS. <laughs> y'all, I love y'all. Mm. We're going to have to cut all that out. <laughs> You've probably found, just as I have found, that wisdom is often found in unexpected places, mm -hmm. unexpected circumstances, and probably what's the most hard to reckon with is unexpected people. Yeah. How many of you have learned something very important from someone that you didn't want to learn from? <laughs> Stop looking at your neighbor. <laughs> It happens. I mean, there's plenty of times when I have learned things from fools, yeah. right? Or True. who I thought to be fools, but right. I thought, my goodness, I need to grab a hold of that. Mm -hmm. Maybe not anything else, but that for sure, right? So it, it happens. And so we need to be willing to accept that when it, when it comes our way, no matter what the device of delivery is. <clears throat> but along with the asking, for wisdom it's also something that has to be sought out proverbs 4 and 7 says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom go out and get it proverbs 23 23 i'm paraphrasing it sells tells us to buy the truth and buy wisdom yeah buy the truth and buy wisdom so Oftentimes, it's going to require our energy and our resources and our thought right. to obtain wisdom. You know, we should, we should be willing to, to read and listen to, to people who are experts in their fields. And we should be willing to, to do those things, to, to seek out wisdom. Um, you know, sometimes we'll find wisdom in people that don't ascribe to our beliefs, right. religious or otherwise. Right. You know, sometimes it does. You know, sometimes we get wisdom from people who, who are like-minded, mm -hmm. but sometimes they're not. Mm -hmm. And we need to be willing to learn from people who oppose us as well. Right. Yeah. You know, I can't be so closed-minded as to say, okay, well, you don't, you don't see things exactly like I see them, so I'm just going to keep you at an arm's distance because there's nothing you can teach me. It's just not true. Right. There are plenty of people who have 
innumerable amounts of wisdom they can place into my life if I'm willing to accept it. Right. That doesn't mean I have to agree with everything they say. Right. Right. But I need to be a bit open-minded. And so the key to this practice is found in Scripture. Who would have thought? <laughs> Proverbs 3.21. It says, keep sound wisdom and discretion. So what does that mean when I say keep sound wisdom and discretion? What do you think? Any ideas? Just spiritual ability to know what's of God and what isn't. Absolutely. Yeah, I need to be able to look at something and say, yeah, that's good. No, that's not. We discern what we should hold on to and what we should let fall by the wayside. Yeah. That's discretion. Fear is avoiding it altogether. That's good. Having discretion is being willing to look at something and say, okay, I agree with you here, but not here. Right. And that's okay. Right. And we should be confident. We, we should be confident in who we are and what we believe to be able to do that. And that's going to come from nothing else but study, prayer, reading the word of God, getting right. involved with the things of God, and kind of honing our craft, right? Our individual craft. You know, Brother Quentin, he's a, uh, he, he's a uh, IT. computer whiz. I, IT whiz. God, help me out, brother. What do you do? Everything. <laughs> he, if you need something done with a computer, he's the guy. Mm -hmm. But he wouldn't have got that way if he'd have been closed-minded and not willing to accept anybody's opinion. Right. So we have to be open. We must be secure enough in who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife, she has a saying, said we need to be able to eat the meat and spit out the bones right, right? Yeah. take what's good leave the rest and you'll be just fine i'm coming to a close this morning um you know i i found scripture that i really wanted to use in this lesson and when i, I had originally put it in i had kayla read it it's been a while since i've taught and i, I had her read it and she so <laughs> She so humbly and so sweetly and kindly, she said, you know, I really like everything. She said, but, you know, I just had a question about this one part, and I don't see how it fits. And as kind and humble as she delivered that message, I didn't receive it as good. <laughs> I was like, well, I've been working hard on this lesson. Who are you, you know? <laughs> but I got to put it in. <laughs> here at the end here we go Jesus openly rebuked the religious leaders of his day right he rebuked them because I believe they had so much godly knowledge but they refused to apply it to their lives they didn't put it into action and all this they studied the law they knew it backwards and forwards but they refused to act upon it Right. Or at least the important, part, important parts, right? He, Jesus even he instructed his followers. He said, be obedient to their words because their words are coming from God, but their actions mm -hmm. are no reflection of God. Mm -hmm. Listen to their words, but don't follow what they do. And so it's really not wisdom then, right? That's what we determined in our discussion. It's not wisdom. It's just knowledge if you don't apply it. Mm -hmm. Right? We have, to, we have to do something with, this, with these, this knowledge we have in our heads. We have to place it into action. And so what can we conclude about wisdom? Its fruits are born in humility, love, pureness, and peace. Rather than pride, envy, and selfishness. Mm -hmm. Right? They have, they have good fruit, not evil fruit. We can find it most readily in the words and thoughts of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's where it's found. Mm -hmm. It comes from God. He is ready and willing to impart this wisdom into our lives should we ask for it and seek it out. And then when we, we look at the when we look at like the hierarchy of the values that we could apply to our lives, like wisdom is the tippy, tippy, tip top of the things that we should have in our lives. It should be the most abundant. It should be the most 
valued thing. It should be what we seek out most. What I love about it is when we obtain wisdom, we find everything else. If I can obtain wisdom, I can obtain everything else. That's why it says it's more precious than rubies. It's more valuable than the costliest jewel that you could ever get a hold of because that wisdom, or those jewels, they're temporary. They're going to pass away, but that wisdom is eternal. So together, let's seek wisdom. Let's not just have knowledge up in our head. Let's seek wisdom. Let's, let's seek it from above. Let's seek it from beyond. And let's get a hold of it because there's nothing more valuable that we could ever attain. Amen. Amen. I love you all. Thank you for your attention this morning. Anyone watching, I love you too. Amen. God bless you. Amen.